Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is something you're not going to believe. Check this out. So you're probably wondering what in the heck is going on. Well, let me go back. This all started probably like three weeks ago when I was doing some maintenance on Abel. And lo and behold, I don't know if you can see that. See that bolt that's missing there? Well, that bolt has snapped off in the head. You can kind of see it sticking out there a little bit. Um, so yeah, this exhaust manifold and all the bolts in it are starting to fail. So I figured, well, I'll just replace the bolts. Well, then you start looking at other things, like was there an upgrade for this manifold? Um, what about the turbo? Was there an upgrade for the turbo? Well, come to find out, yes, there was. So that 290 horsepower turbo is not something they make anymore. You can get, I think you can still get the CHRAs for it, which is this dealy bob right here. Um, but starting to look at things and wanting to do a little bit of an upgrade and have something more serviceable, I came across this on eBay. There was three of these available. All of them are sold because I shared this information with a couple other uh, LMTV owners that actually have this turbo on their motor. This turbo normally comes on the 3126. I'll give you a part number here. It's gonna be kind of hard to see. You can look for these, they are on eBay, but they are not at the price that this one was. These were 350 bucks shipped. So this is a 10R 6402. I know it's gonna be really hard to see that. 10R 6402. It is a remanufactured turbo directly from CAT. This was brand new, sitting on a shelf in a box from a seller. On eBay, this still had all the cat um, wrapping paper and all that on it. Um, and this week, what I've been doing is going through and trying to find fittings uh, that will work for the coolant lines because the older turbo does not have coolant lines on it. It is an outdated version of a turbo that they, they just don't use as much anymore. So... Uh, along those lines, that's as far as the turbo goes. Now, does this turbo flow more than the 290 horsepower turbo? I think the part number on that is like 48915 or something like that. Yes. So looking at the specs between the turbos, this turbo flows about 7% more across the RPM range. So what does that mean for the truck? Like, is the truck going to be able to handle it? Is that motor going to be able to handle it? Well, yes. Um, they actually ran a slightly bigger turbo on the marine version of the 3116 engine. And I've been thinking about this for years, and I've just never taken a step forward on it because of all the horror stories I've heard of, and this won't work, and that won't work. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. Um being that this falls in between the 350 horsepower turbo and the 290 horsepower turbo, I think it might be doable for on-road use. Um, the other thing that I noticed is they no longer make that exhaust manifold. Um, you can get aftermarket ones, but CAT specifically does not make them. They may have a few left on the shelf, but it's an outdated version because of the cracking and the corrosion that it's prone to. This is the newer style version from CAT. It's a three-piece um, exhaust manifold that you have to slide together and then you have to use this is what was recommended from the cat stealership um, they also have another cat specific brand which is basically this um, but you have to use this putty in between the sections and you've got to let it set or um, heat treat it by driving the truck for three hours uh, either one will work um, it's not a deal breaker if it if it doesn't work perfectly but um, this is pretty basic you just spray brake cleaner in there and wipe it out and then there's a little ridge on the inside of this that you set some of that putty on and then you slide the pieces together 
Um, and you can run your finger down in there through here and, and wipe some of the excess out or run a rag through there or whatever. Um, pretty basic stuff. The bolt kit comes with all the locks and everything. And this is a very common part that you can find on eBay. Um, the other thing, since that bolt broke off, we use these at work sometimes. Let's see if I can get this open so you can see it. This is a really old easy out kit, but they work fairly well. It's all left hand um, drill bits with a, an extractor attached to it. So basically what happens is you drill your little hole in the bolt that's broke off and then the sleeve slides down in there. And then as you use the drill in reverse, it uh, tensions itself in there, kind of like um, a riv nut would work on the inside of that bolt and therefore it it just backs it out um, I'm hoping that that's the only bolt that breaks in this process but Murphy's Law says that that's not going to be true I just I want this to go smooth I'm up early it's like 4 30 in the morning and uh, I just want to get working on this um, get the turbo clock correctly um, I've got some um, fittings and lines set up and some ideas for the coolant um, and I won't know how to do all of that perfectly until I get the rest of this uh, stuff installed. So basically the first thing I'm going to do is worry about getting all those old crusty parts and pieces out of there. And then from there we'll, um, we'll move forward on getting the new parts installed, running the coolant lines, uh, reconnecting the oil lines. And then of course... Um, I will probably have to tune for this. Now what's going to happen since you're flowing more air is your EGTs are going to be lower but you're going to have less power um, because the air to fuel mixture will be leaner. Uh, in diesel it's not such a big deal because um, you can go in on this motor and there's a fueling screw under the valve cover. Uh, if you back it out a turn to two turns it will increase the fueling. Uh, to make up for the um, correct EGR temps and on my truck right now with the 290 horsepower turbo is factory tuned by a cat technician um, I am seeing uh, 1250 to 1300 um, temperatures uh, going up a steep hill pulling like a heavy load uh, but normally if we're just cruising down the road with like the small motorcycle trailer, we'll probably see around 1200 degrees uh, peak. Um, just pulling up a hill uh, along 6% grade or 7% grade uphill. Um, they say to shoot, and that's a pre-turbo EGR by the way, so that's why the numbers are higher. Um, that's the other thing I have to do here is I've got to drill in a hole for the EGR probe. So um, a whole bunch of steps i got to take to get this system set up uh, a lot of me rambling because I know some of you are probably gonna ask questions uh, how I came about this well this is a fly-by seat operation I've, I've seen a bunch of posts about the s300 on um, like steel soldiers and stuff like that but it always dead ends nobody ever goes into yeah I got it installed and it runs great or it's kind of like a mystery so I want to try and help the community solve the mystery um, these turbos are pretty common you can find them on eBay, like I said, which is where I found most of this. By the way, everything you see here was uh, less than a thousand bucks. So I think the turbo was three fifty. All the exhaust sections were two fifty. The putty was sixty bucks, and the exhaust um, bolt and gasket and locks and all that was an additional hundred and twenty. Um, and then everything else I kind of had sitting around. So the, the coolant lines and these fittings and whatnot, I had all that stuff sitting around. So anyhow, I'm not going to show time lapse on this because this is probably going to be extremely frustrating going through and carefully getting these bolts out one by one. There's 12 of them, making sure they don't snap off. And then, of course, I've got to get in there and get that one that is snapped off out of there. So it's not going to be a fun time. I will keep the video going and updated, though, as we move along. So stay tuned. Okay. So I've got the 290 horsepower turbo out. So far it's actually going pretty good. So I was able to get this out without too much headache. You can kind of see the 
size comparison here a little bit. There is a slight difference between the two of these. Notice there's no coolant passage on this one and then on this one there is. I think I have everything clocked correctly. I just did it on the bench and I got the turbo set up in the direction I think is going to work best. Um, time will tell obviously. Out here, <clears throat> we're not looking too shabby. Uh, I've got to create a little bit of room on that side to get in there and get that broken off bolt out. But uh, so far this isn't too bad. Now, fingers crossed that trend continues. I've been out here for about, I don't know, an hour and a half. Uh, and this is how far I've gotten. So. We're going to keep moving forward. Well, here we are about an hour later. And I've got a pile of trash. Now, I'm up against that bolt right there. It snapped off in the head. Everything else came out great. Um, I sprayed the top of the engine block down above the... Uh, manifold with PB blaster and then this thing this impact torque wrench impact whatever you want to call it right angle was a lifesaver it got those bolts out no problem without breaking any of them um, that only puts out like I don't know 100 foot pounds of torque maybe at the most so uh, it's not going to just grab them and snap them like it would if you used a giant impact on it. So yeah, I've got, I've got this kit. I'm going to try this kit. It doesn't look too bad. It's still sitting close to the surface. So if needs be, I can weld a nut onto it and back it out. But let's uh, start with the least amount of force. Uh, left hand drill bit extractor set. Um, and then we'll go from there. Hopefully this thing comes out right away. Well, I did end up getting it out of there, but it didn't go without a fight. The extractor set didn't work. So I ended up welding some nuts on there and finally got it out. But the first pair of nuts broke off and then the second one held. So that took about an hour to get that out of there, but it's out. And now we have a blank slate or a blank canvas and we're ready to start making the modifications to get this new turbo and new exhaust manifold on though on there so let's keep going okay I just got done installing the uh, EGT probe location uh, this is the location I use some of you guys might use something different pre turbo and then it just I drilled all the way through that little wall there it still has structural support but you get a really accurate reading because both of the uh, exhaust collectors are feeding right into that probe right there so it's probably the most accurate pre-turbo reading you're gonna get just make sure when you insert your probe that it doesn't touch the walls and the way I have it set up right now it just it floats in between those little walls right there and it doesn't touch the very end so that works out perfect for my setup we're gonna start moving on here I've got to get these uh, exhaust sections puttied together uh, and then start focusing on getting that installed. Okay, I got the manifold installed and the locks and the gasket and all that. Um, the easiest way I found to use these locks is to just grab them with some channel locks and then just twist. So you grab one side of the bolt here and the other side on the lock and then just squeeze it and it locks everything down. For some reason this kit came with an aluminum one for under the turbo and it just falls apart when you try to torque these. Um, I torqued these to 36 foot-pounds and then locked them down. Uh, I smeared the inside of the um, center exhaust manifold section there with the uh, MR2000 which is what the instructions say to do and then you just slide the pieces together and I don't know if that stuff's gonna work or not. It just seemed like a really tight fit to me and it just pushes it out of the way but Maybe it forms like a bead as you're pushing it in. It says to put a, um, 
like an eighth of an inch thick bead of that putty on there, and which is what I did, and then I slid it together. So hopefully that works. Uh, now I gotta start getting um, coolant lines routed. I'm gonna put an extra fitting in there um, for the return, and then we're gonna splice into this for the um, supply. So this supply goes back to the Eberspotcher, which is perfect. Um, the manual for the Wabasto for the LMTV says to use this for supply and then this for return. So basically what I'm doing is I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm going to use this for supply to the turbo. And then this will be the return, which is essentially up here in this block. I just have some extra fittings I could use to be able to do that. So I got to get some of the parts transferred over from the old turbo and then we'll get the new turbo installed. All right, we got the turbo mounted. It's kind of a bear getting everything lined up to get it in there. Uh, but I was able to do that without t too much issue. Getting ready to do a um, coolant fitting hookup for the return. Uh, I'm probably going to have to cut a new piece of hose for that, go into the uh, little aluminum loop that goes back up to that because it's going to extend out a little bit further. Uh, and then I got to tie into this guy right here, get the pack brake hooked back up, put the intake back on, put the intercooler pipe on. I'm pretty much almost done. So we'll keep moving forward here. All right, guys, we started at about, I don't know, 4.35 this morning, and it is currently 12.30. I have everything, I think I have everything tightened down, buttoned up. All the hose clamps are tight. Um, everything is oriented where I think it won't rub on each other or everything else. Um, I just got to pour the coolant back in and fire up the truck, see if we have any leaks. Uh, I'll have to take it for a test drive, maybe later today or in the next episode. I will cover how to tune the truck for a slightly larger turbo. I'll cover that in another episode. But as far as today's episode goes, that's probably going to be it, guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. You're going to want to stay tuned. Like I said, literally, we're going to be tuning this motor, which is going to be probably a very straightforward and simple process. But other than that, I hope you guys are staying safe, taking care of each other, and as always, I will catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.